Hi gang, so in my Horus Heresy video a few weeks back I mentioned the original Horus Heresy board game from the mid 90s and how to support its release White Dwarf 161 included a mini game called War Master where you get to recreate the final battle aboard Horus's battle barge. And to avoid confusion that's a different game from this game called War Master which was like epic but for Warhammer Fantasy or these things called War Masters. It's just one of those words Games Workshop like to reuse a lot. Anyway, after watching this, Gary went and tracked down the White Dwarf in question on eBay, one that included a full, unpunched card section for the game, and suggested we actually try and play it. So, uh, how was cutting out all those little pieces? Uh, yeah, it weren't too bad. What I did is cut the vertical cuts with a scalpel, and then yeah. when I had long strips, I cut the horizontals with uh, scissors, and it, it was quite quick, like uh, tw 20 minutes or so. Yeah, I was worried that I would never be able to print them out back to back, but obviously it's a lot easier when you've got the card sheet. Yeah, I was worried that when you did the cuts that Horace would be obviously visible. Uh, but no, it seems like they must have done it slightly bigger on the back so that when you make the cuts, it's got, there's no white mark showing where you, you've missed cut. Yeah. Do you know anything about this game? Are you interested to try it out? I did play the Fantasy Flight version of Horus Heresy, yeah. but it had too much stuff in there, like resource management and stuff happening. Uh, it, it could bog down in mathematics that I lost interest before the battles had resolved okay. at, at all. So we, um, so this hopefully should be a lighter version. Yeah, a small fun version is what I'm looking for. While this is only a little White Dwarf game, it's actually a good microcosm of how all the War Games series games used to work. They were token-based stacking games, like the old Avalon Hill or TSR War Games that I could never really figure out as a kid. I used to own Doom of the Eldar when I was about 12, but I'm not sure I ever managed to get anyone to play it with me. Anyway, this is the same basic system. Your units are represented by tokens, which you can stack to a certain limit. In this game, three tokens per stack. When two enemy stacks come into contact, you compare the combined attack attack or defense numbers of each side, and depending on the ratio between them, roll on one of these columns. The results range from outright destruction of one stack to destroying one of the loser's tokens and pushing them back a space. Pretty simple, it's just usually played with a lot more tokens than this. In Warmaster, one player is playing as the Imperium, with the Emperor leading a crack team of elite units aboard the Vengeful Spirit to hunt for Horus. The other plays as the Forces of Chaos, controlling Horus and a load of mostly weak units or special trap tokens, all of which are hidden at the start of the game. The mission is simple. Kill Horus or kill the Emperor. At the start of the game, the Imperial player has overwhelming force but is hampered by unreliable deployment and slow movement speeds, whereas the Chaos player has the advantage of bridge control, which means faster movement speeds and hidden deployment, but their units are way weaker. As the game progresses, the Chaos player will be able to bring in more powerful units through reinforcement, so the Imperial player has to move quickly to try and find and kill Horus before they're overwhelmed by the gribbly Chaos monsters. In addition to these basic objectives, there are various special areas of the ship that have their own rules, like the engine room, destroying which will force the whole ship to start plummeting into the atmosphere. So let's try it. We start by setting up the board. As the Chaos player, I place all my black tokens face down. Most of these are crew who can only really defend, or the special horror and trap tokens. And then I have Horus and a Demon Prince as my heavy hitters. I spread out around the central section and all the most important sections of the ship. Somewhere in here, I've hidden Horus. Oh, also the one thing we forgot to bring was dice, so we're both using dice roller apps. Sorry. Gary then sorts out his four stacks of three tokens to teleport in. He goes for the Emperor, Terminators and Devastators, Sanguinius with some Terminators and Assassins, Rogaldorm with all the Imperial Fist Tactical Companies, and General Kane with the two Blood Angels Assault Companies. It's never really clear who General Kane is, like the Loyalist Fabricator General in the modern Horus Heresy books is called Kane, but I get the impression this isn't meant to be him. Who knows? Anyway, the game begins. The Imperials always get first turn, so Gary can place the Emperor's stack wherever he wants. He goes directly for the shields. If he can take control of them, then one square a turn will get destroyed by defense laser fire. The rest of the stacks roll on the teleport table. Sanguinius's stack rolls a 53 and arrives right next to him. Rogel Dawn's stack rolls a 56 and goes directly for the bridge, but General Kane's stack gets a 16 and ends up all the way down on the flight deck. In the movement phase, Kane's stack moves one square into the engine room. We decide to work our way up the ship with the combats. In the engine room, Kane discovers a trap and a crew token, but Kane discards traps, so they only have to fight the crew, which is attack 17 to defense three. Definitely a three to one on the combat table. Gary rolls a three and and the crew are routed. We then have to roll a dice to see if we accidentally blow up the engine room, but Gary gets a four and avoids it. Next, the Emperor squares off against two horror tokens and Doombreed, the greater demon. Good aim here, because the Emperor gets to discard horror tokens. 
All the demons in the game have a random strength score, but Doombreed must have been caught unawares as his strength ends up being 5 versus the Emperor's stacks 19. Another 3 to 1, Gary rolls a 6 and Doombreed is destroyed. Next, Sanguinius discovers another trap and some crew. The trap token activates first. I roll a 4, which is great because on a 4 plus 1 enemy token is destroyed. Gary picks the assassins, but again it's another 3 to 1 and the remaining crew token is easily destroyed. Finally, Rogaldorn attacks the bridge and finds two horrors and another crew token. The horror tokens activate first. For each horror, you roll a dice for each enemy token, and on a 5 plus, they're destroyed. Unfortunately, after all the rolling, none of the Imperial tokens have fled, so the combat proceeds on another 3 to 1. But Gary rolls a 2, and one unit from each side is destroyed in a bloody combat. My crew and one of his tactical squads. That means that the Imperials now have bridge control and will be able to move three spaces a turn. And now it's the Chaos turn. I roll a d3 for my reinforcements and get three random tokens from the Grey Pile. Two squads of Chaos Marines and some Chaos Dreadnoughts. All three tokens roll high on the teleport table, all in the 60s, so I can put them wherever I want. I form up in the middle of the ship. Then it's my movement phase, and I start by moving around a load of secret black tokens. I'm trying to block the Imperials in the prow so it'll take longer for them to push down ship and find Horus. They might be able to move three squares a turn, but not if they run into a combat with me. My turn's then over. Imperial turn 2 and Gary's Imperial Guard reinforcements arrive. All of them land roughly in the middle of the ship. Then it's the movement phase. Kane's stack moves first into combat in a gun battery. The Imperial Guard then retreat from their impending combats and the Emperor's and Sanguinius' stacks advance down the ship. Rogel Dawn leaves a tactical company at the bridge in case Chaos attempt to steal it back and goes down ship to confront some more hidden tokens. Unsurprisingly, Kane's stack kill the lone crewman they encounter. The Emperor discovers a trap, a crew token, and a crew ambush, which doubles the strength of the defender for this turn. The trap doesn't work, but the ambush evens the odds, giving the Emperor 19 attack versus the crew's 12 in defense, a 1 to 1 ratio. Gary rolls a 1, and the Emperor's stack is routed. The Devastator Company dies, and I push the rest into the officer's quarters. Finally, Rogel Dawn encounters another ineffective trap and a crew token, but only rolls 3 on his 2 to 1 combat, which would be a bloody conflict and kill both of them, but Primarchs get a reroll and with a 5 he defeats the crew. It's not looking good here for Chaos, but two more reinforcement tokens arrive. Another greater demon and some traitor terminators. Both land in spaces with Chaos tokens in and reinforce them. In the movement phase, the unrevealed Chaos units hunker down on the right, while the Chaos terminators and last turn's Chaos Marine stack move to attack Kane and the Imperial Guard. The Terminator stack is revealed as a trap and a horror, but the trap's discarded by Kane, and the horror is ineffective, meaning the fight is 1-2 to two on the table. And I roll a 2, the Terminators are routed. Oops. The Chaos Marine stack then has a bloody combat against the Imperial Guard, wiping them out but losing a token in return. At the start of the Imperial turn, Sanguinius and the Terminators lower the shields, but Gary rolls a 12 and the defense lasers miss. In the movement phase, the Emperor and Rogel Dawn advance on one of the two still hidden Chaos stacks. Sanguinius moves down to attack some crew, and the Imperial Guard take over control of the shields. Finally, Kane's stack moves on to the other unrevealed Chaos tokens. Then, at the very start of combat, the Imperial Guard down in the engine room plant charges and destroy it. Their token's removed and the engine room is destroyed. From this point, the ship will start to tip into the atmosphere and squares will be destroyed from the prow down. Then the combats begin and General Kane has to fight the greater demon Kraxnar, a horror, and Horus! He's been found! The horror goes first and scares the wits out of both assault companies, leaving only Kane to fight Horus. It's one to one and my role means Kane takes Kraxnar with him. Sanguinius and the Terminators then fight the crew ambush in the weapons vault at two to one and annihilate the defenders. And the Emperor's stack discover another trap, which kills the Terminators. The Emperor and Rogaldorn fight the remaining crew, and Rogaldorn's reroll avoids another bloody combat, and the crew are destroyed, still looking desperate for Horus. At the start of the Chaos turn, the Vengeful Spirit begins its descent, and the bridge is destroyed, along with a tactical squad in it. Should have moved them before the engine room blew up. Nobody now has bridge control, so everyone's moving one space a turn. I roll three more reinforcement tokens, another traitor terminators, and two demon hordes. The terminators are delayed, one demon horde are summoned to help Horus, and the final demon horde emerge in the destroyed engine room and are killed. Horus and his demons move away from the Emperor, while the Chaos Marines advance towards Sanguinius, so no combats this turn. At the start of the next Imperial turn, another space is destroyed, and the Imperial Guard keep the shields lowered, destroying the engines. But in the movement phase, the Imperials now have to give chase. Sanguinius and the Terminators don't want to take on Horus on their own, they've obviously read the official story, so they move into the cargo hold to box him in while the Emperor and Rogaldorn move down the ship. At the start of the next Chaos turn, another space is destroyed and two more reinforcement tokens turn up. 
Dreadnoughts and another Demon Horde. The delayed Terminators arrive up near the shields and the Dreadnoughts and Demons arrive in the cargo hold next to Sanguinius. In the movement phase, Horus teams up with the Demons one space away from the Emperor as all the Chaos Marines go after Sanguinius. Attack 17 versus Defense 12 is 1 to 1 and we both lose a token to a bloody combat which means we fight another round. I think this is the first time there have been tokens left over from one of those. In the second round it's now 2 to 1 and Sanguinius is killed. Finally, the Terminators destroy the Imperial Guard and raise the shields again. It's the Imperial turn, another space is destroyed, and the Emperor, now down to his last few allies, attempts to close on Horus. He can't actually do anything else, so that's the turn over. The Chaos turn sees two more Chaos Space Marine companies teleport in. One lands in a destroyed area, and the other lands in the middle of the ship. The Terminators holding onto the shields are destroyed as the ship continues its dive into the atmosphere. And finally, Horus makes his move, attacking the Emperor and Rogal Dorm with the two units of Dreadnoughts from the cargo hold. It's attack 24 versus defense 17, and the rerolls provided by Horus and the Emperor cancel each other out. I roll a 6 and the defender is routed, so Horus kills Rogal Dorn and pushes the Emperor back. And finally, the Emperor has no choice in his turn but to attempt to attack Horus and the Dreadnoughts. This time it's an unfavourable 1 to 2 ratio and he rolls a 4. In the bloody combat that follows, the Emperor is killed. Chaos win this time. So there we go, we actually played three games in total and Horus won every time. The Imperial player always has a huge advantage at the start, but unless they can seize that bridge and find Horus as soon as possible, they risk being overrun by Chaos reinforcements. Overall, I really like this game. It's much easier to digest than a lot of the war game series I remember, and yeah, it was over pretty quickly and a lot of fun. It's also got just enough to it for you to feel like you get a little bit better every time you play it. But Gary's the guy who bought it, so let's see what he thought about it. So, you played the Emperor three times. Any tactics, any tips? Do you think it's possible for them to win? Yeah, I think the Emperor can win. I think I just need to focus my hunting packs a little bit more. I spread out too much. I lost trips needlessly that could have been piled into tokens that would have been more resilient. Yeah, if they were piled into bigger stacks. Yeah, so spreading out and hunting didn't work. I think I needed to be a bit more acute in where I was putting my resources. But otherwise, general gameplay? Lots of fun, yeah. Um, yeah, in some games, like when Magnus the Red teleports in and he helps in a battle, you're like, oh, this is a, this is eventful and yeah. stuff. For such a small token game, to have Magnus the Red come in and have a fight with Sanguinius, you're like, wow, oh, this is a big thing. So yeah, for a small game, it was loads of fun. I think I preferred this to the Horus Heresy, the big game purely yeah. because there was too much happening and too much resources and too much stuff out I was watching, whereas yeah. this is just more condensed and fun. Based on this, are you, what do you think about getting other games in this series? We could dig up loads. We're willing to give it a go and uh, go through the back catalogue. I did have my eye on Block War. What's um, Block War? The Judge Dredd uh, one where you've got lots of tokens and you move them around the blocks and you yeah. attack the neighbouring blocks. Okay, cool. There we go. And that's it for this video. I really enjoyed doing this, it was the first Let's Play we tried to do, so maybe we'll dig out some more ancient Games Workshop games and give them a go. Thanks for watching.